discussing the issues that make Phoenix a world-class city. Now, on the issues. Welcome to On the Issues. I'm Phoenix City Councilwoman Thelda Williams. On this episode, we will learn about a very special organization bringing awareness about the high rate of suicide in our community. And we will find out about a unique city partnership to prevent suicide and assist families impacted. My first guest is Leanne Hall, founder of Andy Hall's Sunshine Foundation. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Felda, for having me. I really appreciate it. We hadn't talked for a long time, and then we met last month. Yes, yeah. And you've had to face every mother's worst nightmare. And I, I just think it's important that you come on the show and tell us what happened and what you think caused it, and most of all, how parents can get involved and help their families. I I'm, feel privileged to be able to do that. It's a strange word even to say excited or privileged in um, when you're experiencing something like this. This is the ultimate worst experience that anybody can face. And I think um, I wrote about it yesterday on my Facebook post that you really have two choices when you're dealing with tragedy. You're going to retreat and be angry and bitter or you're going to go forward and turn this into something that honors your loved one and makes a difference in the community. And I, I choose to want to make a difference. Uh, Andy was a very, is a very special person to me. He was my fourth child, uh, attended Sandra Day O'Connor, great school um, with a really bright future. He was 16 years old and a great student, loved by his friends, many, many friends, and was actually being scouted by the Dodgers and the Royals. He was an awesome left-handed pitcher. So very excited about what was ahead for him. We invested our, our lives and our hearts into his journey, as most parents do with their children. So we were really blindsided by what happened to him that day. Uh, the journey really began back in September when, of 2012 when he started taking Accutane, which is a prescription drug for acne. And upon meeting with the dermatologist, you know, we were given the normal mm -hmm. um, concerns of any drug that we hear and see on the TV or whenever we're receiving a prescription drug, that there are potential side effects. And the pamphlet was fairly thick and the dermatologist handed it to me and he said, you know, I really need you to sign this. And three of the major concerns of Accutane are suicide, psychosis, and depression. Well. At that moment, when I looked at that paperwork, my son's a happy, well-adjusted kid. No signs of depression, right. just um, he really, had everything going really, for he him. did. He, he was, really did. He was at the pinnacle of his life. It was, he was a joy. It was a lot of fun. Um, so I didn't give it a second thought. It never, never crossed my mind that Andy might be one of those small percentages that those risk factors applied to. Um, after he started taking the drug, we noticed um, a really fast spiraling down of his grades. Um, he would get lost when he was driving around town in his truck. He'd call me and he would say, you know, Mom, I don't remember how to get here. I, I don't remember um, where I'm going. And, and honestly, some of those things, I, I just thought he was goofy. I thought that those are normal. He was my fourth teenager. Those are, some of those are really normal teenage signs, having trouble with grades. He was spending a lot of time playing baseball. We were gone all the time. So I, I attributed some of that to just, we, he was missing some school. Never entered my mind that there was something else going on. So at that point in time, we tried to deal with some of those grade issues and, and began approaching the school. I saw some of the failing grades, which he had never had ever in his whole career, uh, school career. He'd never missed school, never been tardy, uh, never had any disciplinary action. And so I approached his teachers and the um, counselors and the administrators. I went through all the proper channels in the weeks and months to come, really with no success at the school. And December 11th, 2012, um, Andy went to school for the first two hours of class 
and walked off of a closed campus and within the next five hours shot himself. You know, that, that was such a quick time frame. It was very quick. Um, no real time to react as a parent and really even as a community. If you're looking at his coaches and the people that were surrounded by him, no one. Andy, if you interviewed 100% of the people that knew Andy, 100% would say that he's the least likely kid for this to ever happen to. So if this can happen to Andy, you realize the risk factor of so many kids out there and what, what are we missing? What are we not seeing? So I really didn't attribute it to the Accutane even at that moment because it was such a shock to our mm -hmm. system and what was going on. A few weeks after Andy died, um, the dermatologist called me and he called me three times actually and I finally took the call the third time. I thought he was just calling to reschedule the next appointment. And he said, Leanne, I just, I'm devastated by your loss and I want you to know that Andy was the most well-adjusted kid I've ever met and I reported it to the FDA that his suicide was a side effect of the drug. And that was shocking to me. It never even occurred to me. So I proceeded on down the road trying to figure out what do you do with that information? What do you do with the anger that I had at, with the school really not responding the way that I had hoped that they would respond? And, and with him leaving school campus, how does that happen on a closed campus? What does closed campus really mean to us as parents and, and to the faculty? So I went to the school to begin processing this next leg of the journey and my grief and met with one of the administrators there who was um, less, than, less than helpful and really aggravated the situation at that moment. And when I walked out of his office, I said, I want to see the principal, and I want to see the principal now. So they took me into the principal's office, and the difference between that administrator and the principal, he opened his arms wide open and said, what can we do? We want to help. We want to make a difference. Your son was loved. And that was a turning point in, in this journey of mine. It really led me from um, being a passive recipient of the grief to I want to be proactive and make a difference in the community. And this partnership with Sandra Day O'Connor was astounding. They opened the doors for me to speak to 3,000 kids and faculty members. And at the end of that speech, there were kids that went to the, their counselors and said, you know, I think I've been contemplating suicide, but we had to be able to talk about it. And this school was brave enough, this district, the Deer oh. Valley School District was brave enough to say, we want to deal with this issue. It's there, whether we're going to talk about it or not, we're losing our kids. All over, the, all over the world. It's the third leading killer of our kids. But it's shameful for parents. It's shameful for a school district. It's hard to talk about. Nobody wants to say that their kid has committed suicide or that their student. We all feel like we're failures. We can change that by, by what we're doing here, by talking about it, by exactly. the school embracing this journey, so we started this nonprofit foundation, Andy Hull's Sunshine Foundation. Um, his nickname was Sunshine, so that's really indicative of the type of personality that he had. Um, it's been a really fast journey. It was nine months ago yesterday on 9-11 uh, that Andy passed away. And since then, we have 12 amazing members on our board of directors. We have new fundraising activities. We actually had our first fundraising activity last year, and we managed to raise $6,400. We did scholarships to the seniors of Sandra Day O'Connor last year. We're going to continue that journey. And this district has opened its door now for me to speak to the K through 12 administrators. I'm going to speak to different faculty, uh, athletic organizations. That's my message. Open the doors for us to get this message out, not just to the Deer Valley School District. Exactly. It needs to go everywhere. everywhere. And, and I, I really applaud you. It takes a lot of courage 
It's uh, a hard journey. I, I, I can't even imagine it. Uh, I, I, but what you're doing and to bring awareness to the community can make all the difference. I mean, we, you are saving lives. By the help of people like you who are brave enough, and it really is that. Are you brave enough to take the time to talk about a subject that's not happy? No. It's sad, and no one really wants to be sad or talk about something that's sad. But if we don't do that, then we will have no resources for our kids. Our kids are bombarded with so much media now, Facebook and Twitter, and they need to be able to be equipped to handle all of those, all that input that's coming at them. And at a, when they're teenagers, they're not. They react impulsively oh, yes. in, in that second. A after we met, I went home and checked my teenager's mm -hmm. uh, medicine because he had acne problems and I wasn't sure what was prescribed. Thank heavens, this is a, a topical. It, yeah. it is not um, the same, but I, I was totally freaked. But I, it made you check. But I did, and I, I think anybody watching this show or has teenagers that is taking some type of medication, check. Yes. Because it could be your child next. And to be that parent, really, I, I've got another message to the parents, and it's not allowing your teenagers to tell you that they're really in charge of their lives. They aren't. They are not equipped to do it. It's okay if they're mad at you. It's okay if they don't like your invasion of their privacy. You need to invade their privacy and you need to double check. Why are they, why are they lost when they're driving <coughs> around? Why are their grades slipping? All right. You can't be a buddy. You need to be a parent. Need be a parent, definitely. I, I want to thank you for coming on and giving your message. And I, I believe we're going to have uh, your foundation identified. People can donate to you. Yes. Uh, they can also, I believe, contact you and you'll come speak. I will. Uh, I would any love group. that. Yes. So, uh, again, thank you very much for coming on and telling your story. And I definitely applaud everything you're doing. And any way I can support you, please let me know. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Up next, how the City's Family Advocacy Center offers resources for those impacted by suicide. Keep watching on the issues.